More than 70 passengers set out on a routine train ride from Niagara Falls to Toronto in Canada. However, a track fault and its repairs would set off an indirect chain of events leading to an accident that, still to this day, is hard to explain. This is the story of the Burlington train derailment. At around 1pm on the 26th of February 2012, the crew of Via Rail train number 92 signed on for duty for the twice weekly service between Niagara Falls and Toronto. Having brought the train in the opposite direction the day before, the crew consisted of three engineers and one cabin staff. It's worth noting the service would typically have just two engineers but at least two cabin staff, however the third engineer was a trainee and a second member of staff for the cabin wasn't available. 40-year-old Patrick Robinson, with nine years of experience as a locomotive engineer for Canadian National and Ottawa Central Railway, was undergoing familiarisation training, having started at Via Rail in the months prior. The two senior engineers were 56-year-old Ken Simons and 52-year-old Peter Snar, both having worked previously with Canadian National, had around 50 years of combined experience. In 2012, Via Rail operated around 500 weekly services across Canada, spanning more than 12,000 kilometres or 7,500 miles of track, carrying over 4 million passengers annually. At around 2pm, Via Rail train 92 departed Niagara Falls for the roughly 3-hour run to Toronto. With 70 passengers, one train manager and three engineers, the journey would take the train west towards Burlington, then north, for the final leg to Toronto. As luck would have it, at the same time Via 92 was leaving Niagara, around 50 miles away, a Canadian National track maintenance crew had begun line repairs on Track 2 in the Burlington neighbourhood of Aldershot. With the Canadian National Maintenance crew holding an occupancy permit between Aldershot East and Burlington West, any passing trains would be halted or rerouted until the maintenance was completed. This would have a direct effect on Via 92. At around 2.47, after a short stop at Grimsby, Via 92 was off again for the 30-minute run to Aldershot Station in Burlington. The Burlington Rail Corridor in Aldershot vicinity consisted of three main tracks, Track 1, Track 2 and 3. Track 1 is generally used by Canadian National Freight Traffic, Track 3 was used by commuter trains, while Via passenger trains would normally go straight through on Track 2. However, due to the maintenance crew working on Track 2 just past Aldershot Station, Train traffic control had set the points to reroute Via 92 from Track 2 onto Track 3 shortly after leaving Aldershot Station. Although the drivers didn't yet know this, upcoming signal lights would inform them. At around 3.15pm, Via Train 92 arrived at Aldershot Station in Burlington for a roughly 7 minute passenger stop. Signal lights before the platform showed yellow over yellow or clear to slow rule, meaning they must approach the next signal at a speed no more than 15 miles or 25 kilometers per hour. This was for the work crew and track switch ahead. Although the engineers didn't know of the work crew or that they would be switching tracks after Aldershot Station, they weren't required to, they just needed to obey the signals. At 3.23pm, Via Train 92 departed Aldershot Station on Track 2. Although the previous signal restricted them to just 15 miles per hour, the engineers continued to apply more power and the train's speed was rapidly increasing. What makes this even more bizarre was that the next signal in view reaffirmed the 15 mile per hour speed limit and that they would be crossing to Track 3 at the upcoming turnout points. However, the train was now at 65 miles or 105 kilometers per hour and increasing. 
Observing VIA-92 not only not slowing down, but speeding up, the Canadian National Work Crew, occupying Track 2 up ahead, moved to a safer location. Now spotting the work crew, and believing they were continuing on Track 2, the engineers of VIA-92 blast the horn and attempt to slow. However, as they enter the number 5 crossover, the train violently shifts from Track 2 to Track 3, the locomotive and all five cars derail. Good evening, thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with breaking news of a major train derailment that has claimed three lives. Killed. This, dozens more have been injured. We're hearing numbers upwards of 30 to 60 people have been injured, many of them critical. Dozens of passengers were trapped in these train cars and rescue crews have been working The train had derailed between King and Enfield Road in the Burlington suburb of Aldershot and sadly all three engineers were killed when the locomotive slid down the embankment and struck a concrete foundation. Most of the 71 on board had been seated in the front two coaches, both of which were heavily damaged. The second and third coach had jackknifed while the front car had also slid down the embankment. 44 passengers plus the train manager were transported to hospital, suffering injuries ranging from minor bruising to lacerations, head, neck, shoulder and back injuries. Still, miraculously, no one in the passenger cars had been killed. But the big question on everyone's mind was, why was the train going more than four times the speed limit and why had they seemingly ignored the signals? With all three engineers tragically killed, investigators had an arduous task ahead of them. The investigation into the accident was conducted by the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, or TSB for short. With more than 22 years of experience, Tom Griffith was the lead investigator, having previously worked on 28 other rail accidents. In the days following the accident, the TSB confirmed Train 92 had derailed while crossing from Track 2 to Track 3 at 67 miles or 108 kilometers per hour, over four times the 15 mile per hour speed limit. Investigators were perplexed as to how and why the crew had seemingly ignored multiple signals. Testing by Canadian National Signal Technicians immediately after the accident confirmed all signals to be working as intended and displaying the correct information to the crew. The investigation was hampered by the fact there was no audio or in-cab video recorders. However, investigators could confirm the crew's cell phones were not in use around the time of the accident. On the 4th of March 2012, the key events were reenacted from another eastbound train on track 2 through Aldershot Station. The reenactment confirmed all signals were visible from the locomotive throughout the journey and that interference from the sun was unlikely. Due to the nature of the incident and the fact all three engineers perished in the accident, no definitive explanation for their actions can be given. Still, the investigation team had their theories. On the 10th of June 2013, more than a year following the accident, the TSB released their final report. The report confirmed what was already known. The train travelled more than four times the speed limit while changing from track 2 to track 3. It suggested the engineers misinterpreted the signal before the crossover as remaining on track 2 at line speed. Concern for the maintenance crew on track 2 ahead of them may have distracted them from correctly reading the signal. Investigators also suggested that the seven minute stop at Aldershot station may have caused the crew to forget the previous signal advising them of the 15 mile per hour speed limit after departing the station, combined with the fact that 99% of the time, VIA trains would depart Aldershot station remaining on track 2 and at line speed. Familiarity and the human factor may have played its part. Back in 2012, all engineers in Canada must undergo a one day refresher course each year, including a review of signal interpretation with a specialized test on signal rules once every three years, with a 100% pass mark. However, the test did not include all signal rules. The questions were randomly selected. Unfortunately, we will never understand the exact cause of this accident, 
we have to settle for speculation and educated assumption. Let me know your thoughts on this accident. Did you agree with the official finding or do you have another theory? And as always, thanks for watching.